actually, let me, uh, it's, so you've got more leads coming in that you know what to do with, and now you've got to figure out how do I follow up with those leads? How do I ensure that everyone that is in my funnel is being followed up with quickly, they're being followed up with efficiently and effectively, and over a long enough period of time to ensure that they're going to do business with me? And then, of course, you've got lead conversion. Well, that's all fine and good, and it leads to greater profitability, uh, depending on how you're doing it. Sometimes you're buying leads, and so your profitability may be a little bit stifled by the amount of money you're paying for leads. Uh, but you want to you want to make sure that in doing all of that, you maintain your balance in your life. You know, my favorite phrase is, "No success in the world can compensate for failure in the home." And uh, you know, I know Brent, you're you're a big believer in balance in life as well. You know, we've got it. We we've, we can crush it in our business. We can do very, very well and succeed at the highest level in our business and still have a great life and still spend time with our family and still enjoy our friends, family, the people around us and the things that we like to do. And so that's really what we're talking about. Well, in order to do that, uh, you're going to need to have a lot of different lead sources. It's not about having, you know, one or two lead sources that bring in all kinds of business for you. It's about having a whole bunch of different lead sources that bring in a little bit of business every month so that you don't have that roller coaster income that a lot of agents suffer through. All right. So I want you to think about this information today like a buffet. You're, you know, when you go to the buffet, you're not going to eat every single thing at the buffet. It's not possible. Even though I try as hard as I can, it, I've never succeeded. And so you've got to take what you like and leave the rest. I don't want you to feel like you have to do everything here. In fact, it would be a huge mistake to try and implement every single thing we're going to talk about today. Uh, you know, what I want you to do is I want you to pick one, two, maybe three sources that are going to work really, really well for you. Um, and that you're going to implement right away. Now, we're seeing, I've got somebody uh, suggesting that we may not have audio. Could you all please raise your hand? If you can hear me, uh, raise your hand. I just want to know that you guys are able to hear me and that the audio is working properly. Okay, I've got a bunch, uh, looks like i got a bunch of hands going up. Okay, good. Thank you for that, you guys. I appreciate that. Okay, so, and we are going to be pretty interactive here, so definitely as as we're going along, be ready to type in stuff in your screen uh, and let me know how things are going for you. I'm going to go ahead and lower your hands now, uh, but thank you for that. And if you're having trouble with your audio, you're not going to be able to hear me help you through it anyway, so good luck with that. Sorry about that. <laughs> All right. Dip they can call in. Hey, Michael, they can call in. I think there was a call-in number on the email that went out. Yeah, there is a call-in number. Let's just see if I can get. Uh, let's see if I can just send this out to everybody. Uh, try the call-in number. All right, we'll see if we can make that work. So I'm just gonna send that to everybody, and hopefully, uh, the people that are having trouble with audio can go that with that way. All right. I want to keep moving forward. We got a lot to cover in a very short amount of time to cover it, and I want to be very respectful of your day. All right, so again, don't try and uh, do all of the things we're going to talk about today. Focus on the couple that are going to work well for you. Uh, different lead sources do produce different results. That doesn't mean that you only want the best ones. You want a lot of lead sources, and, and again, just because something is not performing as well as another lead source doesn't make it a bad lead source. It just means you want to continue to pump time, effort, and energy into the ones that are returning at the highest level and still keep those other ones because they help balance out your business. All right. And again, you got to test those things all the time. Uh, the, te the sources that we're going to talk about today have all been tested and approved by me or by my clients. I've either used them myself in my business or my clients have used them in their business. But all of these are tested, proven, tried, and true. All right, so we're going to I want to talk to you a little bit about pricing on some of these lead sources. What I've tried to do is kind of give you a, a little bit of clarity on the ones that are, are low to no cost, which is like zero to $199 a month. Then you've got your mid-level uh, products. And they're going to be 200 to 499 a month, and then of course you've got your high and your very high priced lead sources that might be anywhere from 500 to 1500 dollars a month. So again, at different times in your business, you'll use different sources. In the beginning, you're not going to be able to afford to go out and, and spend the $1,500 a month on the very high-level sources. So you need to start with the low and the no-cost sources. So we're going to talk about all of those. We're going to give you a whole bunch. Now I want you to think about this. There's over 2,000 different ways that you can drive leads into your real estate business that are available out there today. Again, your job is to select immediately right now the top three that you're going to implement and then gradually increase that as you implement one and you get it working properly, implement the next one. 
then the next one and eventually you want to get to about 12 to 15 consistent lead sources bringing you business on a regular basis all right so let's talk about internet lead sources really quick uh, they're stealth sites. These are sites like the home value sites where they may not know that it's you right now. They're just going to a site that says, hey, get a free home valuation. Some of these are low priced. Some of these are mid priced. Um, there's, there's some of them listed on here. We'll talk about those in just a second. Uh, you've got third party fee for lead sites. Um, there's a lot of these out there. We'll be talking about that in a moment as well. But essentially, you can literally pay to receive leads from those sites. There's branded sites, which would be like, for me in my real estate business, I had 30daysale.com, so people would go to that website and they would see that it's me and they'd see Michael Hellickson all over the place. Uh, but you, for you, it might be solutionsrealestate.com uh, you know, or it might be yourname.com, but you'd have a, a lot of you and most of you probably have a branded website right now that you use with your clients and those are good. There's, there's a value to having those but there's lots of other types of sites out there that you want to be thinking about. These all-inclusive solutions that we're going to talk about, these are like easyagentpro.com. This is one that one of my favorites. I really like Easy Agent Pro. The guys that run Easy Agent Pro are, are young guys. They're super intelligent and uh, very aggressive. Essentially, they've got all the tools and techniques of a lot of these uh, home value sites that they have at their disposal, but they do it at a fraction of the cost, so you're able to spend more of your money on driving traffic to that site versus having to pay so much money to actually have the site. PrimeSellerLeads.com, that's another one that's one of the lower uh, level, you know, lower priced ones. Uh, you know, again, pretty good lead source, uh, but doesn't cost you a lot of money. ListingsToLead.com, uh, another one that's not a lot of money, but uh, can provide you with good lead, uh, lead flow. Of those three, so the, my uh, favorite is EG, Easy Agent Pro. Uh, Commissions Inc. It's very high priced, but it's very effective. Dwayne Legate's the guy that owns that company. Very smart guy. Uh, got a great development team under him, and they do a great job at driving leads. But again, a little bit higher, higher dollar. Conversion.com, another great one. Um, and again, a lot more money, but very effective. Curator Systems is probably the leader right now in terms of you know the home value type sites but for a good reason they charge a lot of money for their service but they do a great job of converting easy agent pro is kind of the less expensive version of curator systems and I would say if I were comparing apples to apples those two would be very comparable in terms of what they offer uh, but very different in terms of price so I would start with easy agent pro and then if you wanted to migrate or try curator systems down the road that would be a good solution for you or good, a good good thing to test out Hey, so so Michael, all yes. of our agents get conversion for free at our company. So wow, uh, that's uh, that's a huge bonus for that. So. Are you kidding? That's incredible. That so conversion is a fantastic tool. I've got it listed as very high price because it is. It's not a cheap tool. And if you guys are getting that for free, you're crazy if you're not taking advantage of it. Raise your hand. I want you guys to raise your hand on the webinar right now if you are taking advantage of of conversion. Okay, I don't see nearly enough hands up. I see a handful of hands up. You guys, really, everybody in on the in the company should have their hand up right now. That, yeah, not everybody uses that tool. I think we only have 130 people utilizing that tool or something because some people are scared of it because it's the technology piece and um, all of that. But uh, that that tool, we're we're having some big success stories right now in in Arizona and in and in California that it's working they're just posting Craigslist ads or doing some PPC and stuff like that so we don't as a company we don't pay for the PPC on it the, the pay-per-click campaigns on it they do it themselves but uh, the system is provided for them well okay so I'm, as I'm looking I'm, I'm seeing that we've got a lot of hands up but not nearly enough and I'm gonna go ahead and lower your hands real quick uh, and if you want to type into your questions box anything you want to men mention on that, that's fine. But what I got to tell you this, you need to have a budget for your pay-per-click and your Facebook ads, and you need to be driving traffic into that conversion site. I mean, that's you're, seriously, you're being given a gift there by your company and by, by Brent and Dave. And let me tell you, it really does work. And I'm not surprised that you're getting great feedback on it, uh, Brent, uh, because it does work very, very well. So... Good stuff. Awesome. Conversion. Use it. Here's the thing. You guys got it. The first thing you want to do before you go implement, in fact, if you did not have your hand up, I would go so far as to say it would be 
probably ill-advised to have you go implement a bunch of other resources until you're using the resources that are already at your disposal. And conversion is a perfect example of that. All right, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and, and again, if you have any questions while we're going along here, go ahead and just type them into your questions box and I'll do the best I can to get to them as I can. Uh, all right, so going to the next, uh, we've got uh, Curious Systems. Craigslist obviously is huge. Um, Craigslist is you know, underrated, I think. A lot of people say that Craigslist isn't as effective as it used to be, and it really is. It's not that Craigslist not, is not effective. It's that you have to be very creative and very cognizant of how you're posting on Craigslist and what you're post posting on Craigslist and where that post is coming from. Uh, but again, it's a great tool, and it's very inexpensive. Uh, in fact, we've got one uh, One of our clients is consistently driving 5 to 15 buyer leads per day with 40 ads on Craigslist. Now, he's using IVR. Uh, we'll talk about IVR in just a moment, but uh, essentially, he's not putting the bedrooms, baths, square footage, or price on that, uh, on that Craigslist ad. Uh, and so what he's doing is he's causing them to have to go to his... Uh, IVR site, which is his 1-800 call capture site, uh, or you know, phone number. So he, they call into that phone number. They can get that bedrooms, bathrooms, square footage, and price information there. Uh, and it and it goes through a particular uh, flow that causes them to hit the button that connects them with him, and it connects them with him real time. He actually goes about 80% call to conversation on that. Now that's a big number. I don't know if that means a lot to a lot of you, but I will tell you this. If you can get to, when people are calling one of those 1-800 call capture numbers and you can get 80% of those people to actually have a conversation with you, that's a very, very, very big number and your chances of converting them to a client are literally 900% better than if they're calling into an ad and it takes you 10 minutes to call them back. Hey, right. So, Michael, the, yes. the IVR that you're talking about, that's just an 800 call capture line, and they're putting that into a picture, uploading that craze list. That's how he's doing it? That's exactly right. And so what he's doing is he's, he's limiting the number of photos that he puts in there. He's limiting the information that he puts in there. He gives enough information to, to make the house attractive. You know, he talks about the kitchen, talks about the big yard, you know, that kind of stuff. But he doesn't talk about bedrooms, baths, square footage, and price because those are the things that everybody has to know, Right. And so then he drives them to his IVR, his 1-800 call capture, and the one that he uses is ProQuest, um, and we'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit. And then from there, they click on the button to talk to him, and all of a sudden, he's live real time with them right then and there. All right, good tip. Okay. Yeah. It, it's fantastic. And I'm literally, we're talking 5 to 15 buyer leads per day on 40 ads. And his assistant, what, what market is he in, by the way? He's in uh, Bentonville, Arkansas. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of people will say, oh, well, different markets don't – and, and it's true that some markets perform better than others in terms of Craigslist. You know, some markets, you know, the, nobody in that market uses Craigslist because nobody has computers. If you're in some parts of the Midwest where there's, you know, literally nobody's getting on Craigslist to look for that stuff in little sleeper towns. But for most of you – and for if you're talking Arizona and San Diego, you there's no question you're going to do well with this strategy. Okay. So. All right, Zillow obviously can be anywhere from low to mid to high to very high, depending on how much you're going to spend on Zillow. Uh, I know, Brent, you and I were talking about this just the other day. Uh, it's a great source. Uh, the leads can, can be fantastic. The key to this is follow-up. And the mistake that most people make is they wait too long to follow up. You don't get to wait. If you're going to be successful with your incoming leads, you have to follow up within five minutes. It is literally, in fact, Harvard Business Review did a study on this, and there is literally a 900% difference between following up with the, in the first five minutes and waiting 10 minutes. Just that extra five minutes lowers your chances of contacting that person by 900%. It's a very big deal. So make sure you're doing that. Trulia.com, also great source. Uh, let's go to some of these uh, corporate sites, right? We've... Um, you've got or your buyer site or your corporate site there's five things your site has to have to convert like crazy this is really really important you've got to have an IDX solution if you're talking about your buyer site what are buyers looking for they're looking for homes that's it that's what they want to see so give them what they want when they come to that website make sure you've got an IDX solution so they can see every home that's listed in the multiple videos are huge 
Uh, and it doesn't have to be fancy. You know, it could just be a video of you walking through a house talking about, hey, when I walk through a house, these are some of the things I look for. Uh, you know, and here's some here's some little tips. You know, you might, uh, you know, don't forget to check behind the doors because a lot of times there's a hole behind the door. You know, the, whatever, just some kind of tips. And, or it could be, hey, here's here's what I look for in a mortgage broker. Or, you know, just any kind of video of you teaching something. Any kind of video will do a couple of things for your site. One, it will it will create greater attention on your site. Two, it will help your site rank higher in the search engines. That's also very important. Uh, now, if you really want to get awesome with it, get video testimonials from your clients. You're, you need to have social proof on your websites. This is very, very important. People want to know that they're not the first one to use you. They want to know that other people like you, that they know you, they trust you. Uh, and so social proof is very important. So get as many testimonials as you can. If you can't get them in video, get a picture of the person and their testimonial. If you can't get a picture and a testimonial, at least get a testimonial and have that on your sites. It's very important. And you've got to have a, a killer USP. Now, USP can be a lot of different things. Uh, for, for sellers, for example, when I was selling real estate, I used a guaranteed sale program. So my guarantee, my USP or unique selling proposition was if I can't sell your home in 30 days or less, I'll buy it, guaranteed. That's a great USP that attracts the people that you want to attract. These are people that are serious about selling their home. Now, you may not be comfortable doing that type of a guarantee. That might be too much for you. If that's the case, think of something that you can do. Maybe it's if I can't sell your home in 90 days or less, I'll give you $1,000 back on my commission or whatever. Figure out something that you can do to one, provide a killer USP, two, reverse the risk with the client. In other words, they shouldn't have to take on risk to work with you. It should be the other way around. If they're going to work with you, you need to take the risk out of it for them. All right. I, like, I like what you said there. That's pretty cool. About? About taking out the risk for them. That's great. Risk reversal is huge. It really is. And you know, because people are afraid, they're they're tentative right now. They're they're very they're, they're very concerned about going into a relationship with with somebody that they don't know, and that these things are all designed to help ease that tension and make it easier for them to do business with you. So then you gotta have a killer call to action. You know, don't be afraid to ask for their business. You know, if you've delivered value, then it's now it's time to actually ask for the business. And this happens a lot on the listing appointment. I can't tell you how many agents I've seen, they'll go on a listing appointment. They'll do a great job on the listing appointment. And then at the end, it's just kind of blah. You know, they just kind of leave it hanging there. And they don't, they don't ask for the business. They don't. Have you ever noticed that, Brent? What, what's that? I said, have you ever noticed that with these guys where they sometimes they'll go on a listing appointment and they fail to ask for the business? Oh, yeah. No, that's common. I mean, that's why people laugh at me when I say close, 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 always be closing. But, I mean, it's so true because if they, if you don't ask, they, they have no idea that you want the business. I'll give you a scenario that um, an agent in California wasn't asking for the business. I told this person that they needed to change their script and make sure their potential client knew that they wanted the business because there's a big difference between, hey, they know I'm in real estate, and hey, they know I want the business. I mean, it's completely different in the eyes of the consumer. And so uh, this person said, well, she knows that I'm, I'm in the business. And I said, well, what if she's afraid to ask you a question or thinks you're too busy? And I know that it's absurd for people to think that, for agents-wise, but for the, for the potential client, that's what they think out there. So you always have to reassure them that you're the right agent for the job. I'm a big fan of the assumptive close. You know, if you walk with confidence, then then they're going to be confident. If you're tend if you're tentative and if you're nervous and uneasy, they're going to be tentative and un nervous and uneasy. So it's important to one have confidence and two know that hey, I can do this. And you know what? I'm the guy that's going to take care of this for you. I'm the girl that's going to take care of this for you. And I'm going to get it done the way it needs to be done. And you can be confident in my ability. And then, like you said, Brent, always be closing. In fact, one of my favorite closing lines is uh, when at the end of the listing appointments, I always like to ask them the question while I'm shaking my head back and forth. Uh, I always say, are there any other questions before we get started on the paperwork? And I kind of smile and I shake my head back and forth and, and they generally will say no and it's like fantastic and I get started on the paperwork and I can get, get their house listed. Sometimes they'll have a concern 
And so I'll cover that concern and I'll come right back and ask the exact same question again. And I've had literally, I've had sellers 12 different times as my, my record. I had one seller 12 different times have concerns after I asked that question. And every single time he had a concern, I'd resolve it. And I'd ask the same question again. Are there any other questions before we get started on the paperwork? Did that 12 times and I actually got the listing on the 12th time. So good stuff. All right. IDX solutions, uh, you know, we talked about that. Very important. You got to have that on your site. Uh, some of them are Zerpel is a good one. Uh, that's a little bit higher cost. Boomtown ROI is another good one. Uh, Tiger Lead Solutions is another good one. I used that for a lot of years. I've actually used all three of these at different points in my business. Uh, Brent, do you have a favorite IDX solution or buyer site that you prefer? You know what, conversions hands down the best in, on the market. I used to have Zerpel. We used to have um, Tiger Leads. Um, Boomtown's good. I like the only function of Boomtown I really like is it makes you register. It tells you to register with your phone number on there um, as your password, so you get more phone numbers. That's the only functionality I think. Other, otherwise, conversion is is the best product on the market. Yep, I agree. I think you're doing really well to have conversion, and especially it's free. So guess what? Take advantage of it. And when I say free, it's being paid for by you guys. All right, tried and true. Here's some good stuff. Uh, so we're talking here about uh, telemarketing, prospecting. Uh, raise your hand if you are currently telemarketing in your business right now. Raise your hand if you're calling FISBOs, expireds, you know, any of that kind of stuff. Notices of default, bankruptcies, any of that. Anybody calling those? Man, you want to talk about crickets. We got like six hands up out of the entire group. That's crazy. So not a lot of prospectors out there. Here's the interesting thing. Everybody acts like, oh, prospecting is hard and it doesn't work anymore and nobody does it or there's too many people doing it, too much competition. Hey, guys, prospecting works. It just does. And if you have more time than money, if you don't have the money to invest in some of these other lead sources, Prospecting is a fantastic way to grow your business. You know, again, you can call expired, you can call for sale by owners, notices of default, probate. Uh, companies I like for prospecting platforms, Vulcan 7 is fantastic. Uh, they get cell phone numbers. Uh, if you can't get Vulcan 7 in your market, you can get Land Voice, uh, which is another great one. Uh, if you can't afford either one of those, the Red X is fine. It's a good starting point. Uh, I would want to upgrade as quickly as possible if I could to either Land Voice or Vulcan 7. Uh, but essentially what these platforms do is they save they save you and your staff the time of verifying phone numbers, the listing status. It's, it's really, it's almost like they're paying you, right? Because you go out there, you sign up for these things, and they get you all of the expired listings, all of the for sale by owners, notice of default, all this stuff. They can get all of these into one place and give you the ability to call them on dialer. Uh, so that you can really hammer those phones and you can hit a lot of people in a short amount of time. The key with the prospecting for these, you know, for, for those different lead sources is consistency and follow-up. I cannot say that enough times. It doesn't do you any good to go through and call a bunch of expireds one day and then not do anything for two weeks. If you're going to be an expired or FISB, you know, if you're going to be a prospector, you got to be very tenacious about your follow-up and you've got to be very consistent with making those calls. All right. Hey, yep. Michael. Go ahead. Why? <laughs> you saying why be consistent? Well, I'm, 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 in your opinion, why do you think you have to be consistent versus calling them one or two times? Um, that's. that's know, I'll, I'll give you a statistic on that. So that same uh, the. the um, the Harvard Business Review in, included in their studies was you know the amount of follow up it takes to do a transaction. So. 90% of agents give up on the th third or previous try. So they'll call one, two, or three times, and then they'll stop calling. 80% of all sales are made on the fifth or subsequent contact. Not even attempt. We're not talking attempt, right? So an attempt doesn't mean that you actually got a hold of them. Remember, they're giving up after three attempts. You know, it might take you six or more attempts to get that first contact. And then you may have to make a bunch more attempts to get to, the, to that fifth contact. But 80% of all sales are going to be made on the fifth or subsequent contact. It is massively important. How, what, how's that, Brent? Does that answer your question? Yeah. <laughs> it's huge. You know, when I was selling real estate, I was, you know, like, like Brent said, I was listing and selling uh, just about 100 homes a month, just over 100 homes a month. And I can tell you that. 90% of my success was persistency. I was pleasantly persistent. 
I would literally make 125 follow-up calls per day. So that's not you know, calling new people. That's just calling people that, that had either come to me or that I had spoken with at some point in time. And those follow-up calls were absolutely critical to my success, no question. And I see that with all of our coaching clients as well. The ones that follow up regularly and tenaciously and are pleasantly persistent, they're the ones that do the lion's share of the business. In fact, I can tell you, when I bring on a new coaching client, my goal for them is I want them to double their income in their first year with us. I can absolutely without question tell you within a couple of weeks if someone's going to double their income or not. And it almost always comes down to two things. Are they following their perfect daily schedule and are they making their follow-up calls on a daily basis? If they're doing those two things, they've got a great shot at doubling or tripling their income. All right. So moving forward, direct marketing. Uh, there's all kinds of ways to do direct marketing, but really what let's talk specifically about mailing. It's best when combined with telemarketing. I never mail anything unless I'm going to call behind it. It's a waste of money and you've got to be very careful with your marketing dollars. So, so is that, is that Michael, is that for just listed, just sold car, postcards in the mail or, um, some of our agents do the Buffini, um, handwritten notes. It's all of it. It's everything. And I, and I'm all about the handwritten notes. Uh, and we'll talk about referral systems in just a moment. That's absolutely a big part of, you know, 60% of the average agent's income comes from referrals. And those handwritten personal notes are a great part of that. Um, but, yes, I'm talking, you know, if you're going to send out just listed postcards, don't send them out if you're not going to call behind them. Your, your, your response rate will literally go up by a magnitude of between four and seven if you call behind a mailing. So it's important now, and I think there's value in a mailing. I like the land, air, and sea approach. You know, in other words, you're you're calling, you're mailing, you're emailing. I like that approach. I think it's important. You need to you need to hit people in different ways. You need to hit them on social media. You know, there's all kinds of different ways you need to connect with people. Uh, but and I and I don't think it's enough to just do one. But I certainly think it's a waste of money if you just send out a postcard and you don't follow up with a phone call. Okay. So, uh, and that goes for your expires, FISBOs, notice of default, probates, all that kind of stuff. You know, you can use the Red X or Land Voice or Vulcan something. You can use those systems to track, you know, who you're going to be mailing out to and who you want to stop mailing out to. You know, if they're relisted with somebody, obviously you don't want to be sending something to somebody that's already relisted. Um, and so be very cognizant of that and make sure whatever you do, you've got a system in place. You don't want to be getting in trouble with your multiple because you solicit a listing unknowingly. So be very careful about that. Uh, and of course, what Brent was just talking about, which is you're just listed and just sold postcards. All right. So let's talk about those referrals now, Brent. This is huge. This is low cost and high value. Absolutely the greatest way to do business. It's more fun. It's more profitable. Uh, there's lots of ways to get referrals. Let's talk about some of them. Other agents are a great source of referrals. Sometimes agents don't want to work in that area that you work in. Sometimes agents don't want to work on that type of property. Maybe they don't want to do short sales. Uh, maybe they don't want to do bankruptcies. Maybe they've got a friend that's, that they don't want to be doing business with. They'd feel more comfortable if that friend worked with somebody else. I know that sounds crazy, but there are agents out there that prefer not to work with friends. Uh, and so other agents can be a great source of business for you. Attorneys, massive. I actually had a bankruptcy attorney uh, that literally would send me pretty consistently anywhere from five to eight referrals a month. Uh, from one attorney. That's huge. That's a great source of business. And he happened to be a bankruptcy attorney. There's also probate attorneys are another great one. CPAs, accountants, your sphere of influence. Let's talk about this for a minute. Your, your current clients, your past clients. How do you do this? Well, first of all, you got to have a database and you've got to build, sort, and qualify that database. So how many of you, by a show of hands, have a CRM that you're putting your database into now? Is everybody using conversion for this rent, or is it? do you have other software you've provided for them for a CRM? No, so they'll use like WiseAgent. Some might use Top Producer. Some of them would, I, I mean, if they have a small database, I just tell them use Excel. Um, you know, some were using Market Leader for a database. I don't know if they're still doing that or not. Um, so it's, it's a huge mix. I'm, I'm not seeing a ton of hands up on on people that have a database right now. So this is big. Again, keep your hand up and raise your hand if you have a database, a CRM, a, a client relationship management software program like WiseAgent or Top Producer or some of these others that you're using now in your business. Here's my feelings on this. I think WiseAgent is a great as an entry level product. If you're you know if you're brand new in the business and you don't really have any sales, then WiseAgent's a great way to go. 
I'd love to see you migrate into Top Producer at some point. Top Producer is one of my personal favorites. I used it for 15 years. I went from just me being, uh, you know, of myself and one assistant to, to over 44 team members on Top Producer. And uh, it was a magnificent resource for us. I refer it to our coaching clients today. Uh, I'll show you in a moment how you can get a discount on them. In fact, if, um, if you just want to write this down, go to topproducerdeal.com. That's topproducerdeal.com, and you can get a discount on their service there. Um, but Top Producer is great. Uh, there's a lot of great resources. I don't have a lot of time to go into all the reasons why, but essentially one of the things I love most about it is you can take all of your leads from all of your lead sources. You can dump them into Top Producer. It will automatically fit you round robin them to the agents that you want to have handling those leads if you have a team or just right to you if, you, if it's just you. Uh, it's inexpensive to start off with. It's very scalable. It provides the really exactly what you need from a lead follow-up standpoint. On uh, you know, so every single day when you show up in the office, you can print out the people that you need to be talking to that day and make sure that you're calling them back. It's massive. It's it's a great resource. So I love it. Uh, all right, calls, notes, and so let me back up. So billing, sorting, and qualifying your database. As you're putting people into your database, obviously you need to determine, you know, who are my buyers, who are my sellers, what motivation level are they. But more importantly than that, or, or at least as importantly as that, and probably more important than you realize, you absolutely must label them as an A, B, C, or D, or an A+. And let me just give this to you real quick. You can write this down. We're going to go through it fast, so write it down quickly. An A client is someone who has either bought a home or sold a home through me or has sent me a referral. A B client is someone that I believe they would do business with me if I taught them how and I reminded them, or I believe they would refer people to me if I taught them how and reminded them. A C client is essentially everybody that comes into your database, they start off as a C client. A D client is somebody that you don't want to do business with again. These are the knuckleheads. These are the people that suck the life right out of you. You don't want to delete them from your database because they'll find a way to sneak back in. So what you want to do is you want to label them as a D so that you remember next time, hey, this is the kind of person I do not want to do business with. Your A-plus clients are the people that have done a transaction with you, sent you and sent you a referral, or done multiple transactions with you and sent you multiple, or sent you multiple referrals. It's important that you segregate your database like this because you need to know where to spend your money, who to spend the most money on, who to avoid, you know, not spend the most money on. You're going to get the biggest bang for your buck that way, and you're going to be able to do the things that you need to do to get those people actively sending you referrals on a monthly basis. Calls, notes, pop buys. You know, you, you've talked about some of Brian Buffini's methods. You, if you guys have talked about Brian, you've talked about these. And yes, they're very, very important. Uh, in fact, I would say you should be writing at least five handwritten personal notes each and every day. When you do, there's a system for it. You know, use blue ink, broad tip pen, three to five lines, unique clothes, and in the upper right hand corner, you want to write down, okay, this is, uh, you know, where I was, what time it was uh, when I wrote the note. You know, so that it really feels personal, and they can really kind of identify and picture you writing that note at that time. Sounds crazy, but it works. Don't ask me why. I don't know the science behind it. All I know is it works. So, all right. Uh, let's see here. We got newsletters. How many of you, raise your hand if you guys are currently sending out a newsletter. We've got a couple of people sending out a newsletter. Not very many. Uh, looks like I got a few. Actually, okay, there's a few more hands going up. All right, good. There's some great newsletters out there that you can buy. Um you know, I don't have one that I particularly uh, endorse. I do. I will say this. Um, there's. Oh, I'm trying to remember the name of it now. Um, anyway, it's 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 fallen. I I can't remember the name of it right off the top of my head. But uh, if you email me, I'll get it to you. But newsletters are huge. I mailed out a newsletter to my database. I can tell you that it accounted for about forty thousand um, dollars a year. Uh, when I was a single agent, that's before I had a team, I was doing about $40,000 a year that I can directly attribute to that newsletter. Uh, why? Because it helped people connect with me at a different level. I don't want you to do just a, it's okay if you do a professional newsletter, but you also need to do a more personal newsletter. People need to know, like, and trust you. So that newsletter should help them understand who you are and what you're all about. Uh, Wait, hold, on, hold on, let me stop you there, Michael. Michael, what do you mean personal newsletter? I don't understand. Okay, so instead of saying, you know, here's all the market statistics and, you know, it's all professional and perfectly formatted and it's just, it's all, you know, 
business, 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 what you need to be doing is you need to be, you know, have fun articles, you know, the kind of thing, you know, like when you go to the Starbucks or not Starbucks, but sometimes you go to a restaurant, they got those little coffee times or whatever that they have just, you know, fun articles to read, just kind of a, a little bit of a distraction, the kind of thing that somebody would keep in their bathroom or on their coffee table or whatever. Um, more importantly, you want to mention in your newsletter a lot of things about your clients. So you want to talk about, hey, I've got this client event coming up, or hey, uh, we want to thank uh, Bob and Susie for sending their friends Joe and Tiffany over to us to do business with us. Uh, you know, it's it's you want to connect with people in your newsletter. Do a quiz question, you know, something that people can easily Google the answer for, so they can submit a quick answer and give away something, a you know, twenty-five dollar gift certificate to your Red Robin or whatever your favorite restaurant is. Uh, you know, or, or maybe a Starbucks gift card for people, you know, for, for, you know, you raffle that off, you take all the people that sent in a correct answer and you draw a name from that and you, and you give them the little prize. Stuff like okay. that. Does that make sense? Okay. Yep. Yeah. And it's huge. It really makes a difference. I can tell you that I, when I stopped at one point in my career, I wasn't sure, you know, oh, am I getting the bank for my buck out of my newsletter? So I didn't send it out one month. Oh my gosh. I got inundated with people calling me and, and emailing us saying, hey, we didn't get our newsletter. just want to make sure we're still on your list. Yada. I mean, it was crazy. Uh, and so it's definitely got value. Uh, the right newsletter does. Value added items, you know, we're not going to go too deep into that. But, you know, that it's important to constantly be bringing value to people that exceeds their expectations uh, on, a, on a regular basis. Client events are huge. I had a client uh, contact me the other day. Uh, he, 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 so he, he became a client here a couple of months ago because he had been working REO for quite a while, for about six years. He was doing a lot of REO, and he calls me up and he says, Michael, what do I do? I, I'm, I, I haven't talked to my database for literally over six years. I haven't even contacted my database. What should I do? Um, and I said, well, the first thing you need to do is you need to schedule a client event. And so we did. We scheduled a client event, and I gave him my client event checklist. You know, so he signed up for coaching all this, and I started coaching him all this. He literally follows the checklist to a T. He gets a listing and a sale the first day. He schedules his client event for Labor Day weekend. Don't ask me why. I would not have recommended that, but he chose Saturday on Labor Day weekend for the day to hold his client event. He got 125 people to show up. I couldn't believe it. You know what his client event was? It was a barbecue in the park. He didn't even pay for it. He had his lender pay for the food. It cost him nothing, nothing. And he had 125 clients show up that he could press the flesh with, shake their hands, say hi, connect with them again at a deeper level, and absolutely knocked it out of the park. It was awesome. So there's lots of different things you can do for client events. I'm not going to go into a lot of those today uh, because we we're short on time and i got to get through some of the rest of this. But just know that client events are fantastic. Social media, great stuff. You know, social media does very, very well. Um, but you've got to know how to do it. You know, it's not enough just to post. And by the way, when you're posting on social media, 80% of it should be personal and only 20% of it should be professional. If, if your Facebook looks like the MLS, something's wrong. It should, your, Facebook is not meant to be the MLS. Facebook is meant to connect with people socially. That being said, as you develop that relationship with your folks on Facebook, then now you've earned the right to start sending some listings out and send, you know, send stuff that's interesting to them that will drive them to contacting you. But be very careful about how you use your social media. Again, we talked about social proof a minute ago. Very important on, your, on everything you do, you need to have social proof. People need to know that they're not the only ones doing business with you. Charity events. This is huge. Uh, you know, Brent, you and I have a friend in common in Mike Bjorkman, and man, that guy is the charity king. He does yeah. 10 charity events per year. 10 charity events per year. And let me tell you, he does a million dollars a year on 60 transactions. Why? Because everybody knows him, everybody loves him, everybody trusts him, and it comes, a lot of that comes from doing the things we've already talked about combined with adding a charity component to everything he's doing. So that's a very big deal. Uh, wrapped vehicles. One of the things Mike does is he takes his wrapped, he's got one of those moving vans. He takes his moving van that's got his wrap on it, his logos and all that on it. And when he does a charity event, he lets them use that to move the stuff in and out for the charity event. And, um, and he gets to park it outside at the charity event during the event. So everybody that comes to the event sees his big old billboard parked in the parking lot. Pretty cool stuff. 
you know, wrapping your cars, those are fine too. Uh, if you're going to have company vehicles or if you're okay with having your car wrapped, unfortunately, I'm not the kind of driver that I should probably have my car wrapped because I don't necessarily want people to know who I am. You may be the same way. I don't know. But uh, if you are, don't wrap your car. <laughs> Yeah, um, I probably will not wrap mine. <laughs> yeah, well, some of us are definitely guilty on that one. All right, so let's talk about your agent outreach program. We're going to go through this real quick. One of the biggest mistakes I made in my business was not having an agent outreach program. And when I grew really, really fast, I went from doing about 400 transactions a year to doing about 1,000 transactions a year in a 10-month period. During that time, I didn't grow my team fast enough, and I had everybody mad at me. If you were an agent in Washington State at that point in time, you hated my guts because my team was not delivering the kind of customer service we needed to. We weren't getting back to people as quickly as we needed to. We just weren't taking care of them at the level we needed to. And that caused a lot of problems for us that you don't need to go through. So develop an agent outreach program early on. It's a great recruiting tool. I know, Brent, you are phenomenal at this. Uh, it's a great re recruiting tool. It helps to reduce or eliminate complaints from agents because now instead of them perceiving you as an adversary, all of a sudden now you're their friend, you're an advocate for them. Uh, this involves doing calls, make, you know, writing notes, just like you would write notes to clients. You're going to write those notes to the agents. Maybe you host a seminar for agents in your market uh, or just even, it could even be as simple as taking the time to educate an agent on a phone call. If they need help with something, you know, if, if they're having a challenge, take the time to help them out. Be a giver. So, yeah, go ahead, Brent. Yeah, this I, th I think this is a huge part because when, when I had a tremendous amount of listings, I had 400 listings at one point, and, and uh, I was, you know, running around like crazy, and we'd get call complaints and stuff like that. But one of the, one of the cool things that I did is I did a $2,500 giveaway for Christmas one time, and I had a party for all the people that sold and showed my listings between like, I think it was October 1st through like December 15th or something like that. I think there's a video on YouTube still um, of, of me. This is four or five years ago or something like that um, of giving back to the agents that were showing my listings. So I think that's really big. It'll give you a great reputation because nobody will do that typically out there. Um, and I, I think agents are our clients also when we're listing properties because Without them on the other side of the transaction, typically uh, we're not going to sell it ourselves. We have like a five or seven percent chance of selling it ourselves, typically. So I I treat those other agents as my clientele also. So I would I agree with that, Michael. Yeah, I yeah you know it's huge and you know you hit the nail on the head. Think about this: when you go to and you're competing against another offer, you darn well better be that agent's best friend. You know you need that agent on your side because guess what? All things considered equal, they're going to go with the offer that the agent recommends. And so you want to make sure that you've done everything you can to make sure that that relationship is solid in the way it needs to be. Um, so, you know, you can teach a seminar. You can have Brent do it. You can have me do it. Um, you, you know, you can go to a lot of it. One of the things I did early on in my career was I did a lot of short sales seminars uh, because a lot of agents didn't want to do short sales. They hate them. They didn't even know what they were. And, man, I got to tell you. I got so many agents referring their short sales to me, it wasn't even funny. Uh, REO agents uh, referrals from agents is huge. Brent and I have done a ton of this type of networking where, you know, it's, it's kind of like trading baseball cards. The difference is if I have a Mickey Mantle and I'm going to trade it to you for your Babe Ruth, I end up with a Babe Ruth and you end up with a Mickey Mantle. But in REO, it's... I, trade, I, I give you my Mickey Mantle, you give me your Babe Ruth. We both end up walking away with Mickey Mantle and Babe Ruth. And let me tell you, it is huge, and that is how REO works. REO is not about, hey, let me go do as many BPOs as I can possibly do and, and hope that I get business. Uh, it's really a relational business. And by the way, now is not the time for REO. It's coming. And we're another about another year and a half, maybe two and a half tops, but we're, we're, it's coming back again. But right now, we want to focus on our traditional business. That's the, the way we need to be following the market and, and, and doing what the market dictates. All right, fee for lead services. Let's go through some of these real quick. There's top-down short sales. I'm not going to go into that right now just because of the way the market is. There's fee, The other fee for lead services are like leadslikecandy.com. This is probably my favorite fee for lead service. 
Um, and so it's again, it's leadslikecandy.com. That's actually my affiliate portal into another company that they'll give you a 10% discount on their service. Uh, I love these guys. I literally in one month, and this is not an exaggeration, I promise you this is the truth. I literally listed 30 homes out of that one lead source one month. Now, those weren't all leads that I got that month. Most of those were leads that I had been following up with for several months, but all in one month, I literally took 30 listings from that one source. So I love leadslikecandy.com. Triggerlistings.com is very similar to Leads Like Candy. It's a little bit different, but I love that source as well. Uh, Realestatepipeline.com, that's another good one. Uh, paid prospecting alternatives. If you don't want to be prospecting, you just want to hire somebody to do the prospecting for you. Uh, you can hire an ISA or an inside sales agent. That's a great uh, resource. Uh, you can hire a virtual assistant, which I'm okay. For most of you, virtual assistants are probably not right just yet. Uh, if, you're, if your business is already fairly mature, you've already got your, your, your local assistant that's kind of your main assistant, uh, then yes, VAs can be a good alternative to as, as you grow your team, they can be a good augmentation to your team. Uh, but I wouldn't recommend a VA as your first assistant. Uh, and that's crazy because I actually own a VA company. So for me to say that means for sure that, that it's probably not a good idea for your first assistant. Uh, listingappointments.com is another one. Phoneanimal.com is a newer one, uh, but I've had I've heard really great uh, results from them. They're expensive. It's a couple grand a month, plus you got to provide them with the data they're calling on, uh, which they'll tell you what data sources you need to pay for so that they can uh, get the right data. But I'll tell you, most of the agents I know that are using these guys right now are bringing in three listings a month minimum just on that one resource. Uh, and so, you know, depending on your market, you know, especially if you're in California, those could be a great, even in, in Arizona, those, that could be a great source. All right. Uh, there's tons of others but that we're working on right now that we haven't vetted real well yet, and so I'm not comfortable referring them to you. Uh, but those ones that I've listed so far, we're, we're confident in. Uh, referral fee based sources so this is where you don't have to pay up front for the lead but you do have to pay if and when you close a transaction with them agentmachine.com is a good one uh, daveramsey.com has an ELP program or an endorsed local provider program this is a great program uh, now I will say this you need to be doing they look for agents that are doing about 35 transactions a year or more those are the, that's their core agent is doing about 35 uh, transactions a year plus. Uh, but I'll tell you this, I, I know a lot of agents and I have as well done a ton of business as an endorsed local provider of Dave Ramsey's. Uh, Glenn Beck also has one, uh, very, a program very similar to Dave's and his, the, the way you get to his is through realestateagentsitrust.com. Again, that's realestateagentsitrust.com. That's Glenn Beck's version of a paid, uh, of, a, of a referral fee based system. All right, some more great sources and strategies. Radio and TV advertising. This is expensive, but I will tell you, it is awesome. I can, and when it comes to cost per transaction, this is actually the lowest cost per transaction source you'll find other than referrals. Uh, but it's expensive to do it right. That being said, once you implement it and you're doing it right, it will just, it absolutely is like pouring gas on a fire. And there's very specific ways you need to do it. Please don't go try and do radio unless you talk to Brent or Dave or me first. Uh, if you're going to do radio, you need to get the right advice on how to do it properly so you don't waste a bunch of money on it. It's very easy yeah. to do it wrong. I've got, I've got two friends that are doing it right now, one in Michigan, uh, number one agent in Michigan, that uh, he's doing his stuff. And then Russell Shaw, we, we talked to him there in Phoenix, and they'll tell you exactly what to do, what not to do. They're pretty open uh, to it, but it, you do have to spend a tremendous amount of money to do it. You do, yep, yeah, because it's all about frequency with radio. You know, it's and and I don't mean the radio frequency. I mean the the frequency with which the ads are placed. You know, you have to have lots of ads over a, over a given period of time to get those results. All right, I got to crush through here. I'm I'm want to run away behind. I want to make sure I get all this in here for you guys. And by the way, if I don't get through everything today. I want you guys to know that I will make sure that when we go live, when we come up and we do that live event, which is going to be at the end of October, we're going to do both Arizona and San Diego. When we come up to do the live event, I'll make sure that we cover everything. If we missed anything today, I'll make sure we cover it at that live event. Uh, and because there's just more, there's way more than I can possibly cover in an hour. 
Uh, all right, so uh, sign writers. This is huge. We were talking earlier about the IVR. And uh, this is a picture of what my sign looked like when I was selling real estate. And you'll notice it's very simple. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on talking about what your sign should look like, but it matters. And it makes a difference on the number of sign calls you get. I was averaging two and a half sign calls per sign per week. That's good. You could do even better than that, but that's good. And so uh, the sign writers, you know, I had obviously my 30-day guaranteed sale program on there. That's a great draw. Um, the IVR part down at the bottom there, if you look at that free recorded info, 24 hours, that's my IVR. And again, there's the website you can go to to get the deal on the IVR. It's IVRdeal.com. Here's the important key, though. Tell them you want it set up the way mine was set up. Normally, they only do a three-digit extension. You want a four-digit extension. It's important. There's reasons for it. We'll go into it another time. But just make sure that you have them set it up like mine was. All right. Uh, oh, and there you go. I didn't realize that was even on there. All right, good stuff. So flyers. You need to have flyers on your listings. I, it cracks me up. Agents are like, oh, well, I don't want to put flyers on my listings because people just take them out of the box and throw them all over the place. Okay, so go replace them. Well, every time I replace them, they do it again. So? <laughs> then replace them again. It's paper. It's cheap. And it's a killer source of leads. And also, not only do you need to have a one-sided flyer, you need to, it's absolutely imperative. You've got to have a two-sided flyer. Um, and on the back of your flyer, you need to have information about your other listings. This is huge. And I can tell you that of our sign calls, 60% of the sign calls that we got were from the back of the flyer. That's huge. And when you're using call capture technology, that means a lot more people that you can now call and follow up with and do business with. Uh, again, have your 30-day guaranteed sale program or whatever your guarantee is, whatever your USP is, have that on your flyers. Uh, make sure you've got those additional listings. You want to be able to have somebody drive up to the curb, and they should be able to literally, without getting out of their car, they should be able to reach out their window and grab a flyer. This is important. If you will do this, you will be blown away at how many leads you'll get. Brent, you... I hey, I got I to gotta just interject here on yes. that. So all of our agents, I want you to talk to me. Um, before you do or you ever do a guaranteed or I'll buy it because you can get in big trouble with that and I don't really want that out there uh, unless you have my approval on it for the for the company because you get stuck but when I was with Keller Williams before we started solutions real estate uh, Keller Williams it was uh, Scott Agnew's office they were on the hook to buy five houses because the market went down and the broker didn't read the contract so this is a practice. I'm fine for hey, if I don't sell it in 30 days, I'll give you a thousand bucks. You know, if you have a thousand bucks, then you can do that. But I want to know if you're running those 30-day guaranteed sales, just so I can approve it, and we'll go from there. Yeah, that's. I'm so glad you mentioned that, Brent, because it is really, really important. You guys have to have there. There has to be stipulations to your program, and you need to make sure Brent understands what those are going to be, and he needs to agree on it. Because if you do it wrong, like Brent said, you can get you can get sideways on this program really fast. It's really important that you do it right. Uh, now, done right, it's a fantastic program, but done wrong, it could be a nightmare for you. So yeah, you'll be end up being on the news like Hello Williams was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's not good. Nobody wants that. All right. So uh, now, again, done right with your signs and your flyers and all this stuff. You should start putting all these pieces together and you're doing it right. Uh, when I had 750 listings out there, I was literally getting over 6,300 buyer calls, sign calls, just sign calls per month. That's a lot of sign calls. So, and when you think about as you're growing your team, you need roughly about 50 leads per buyer's agent per month. And if you're getting 50 leads to each of your buyer's agents per month, you'll be able to close that or that buyer's agent will be able to close on the low end too. And on the high end, they could be doing seven to 10 transactions a month just off those 50 leads. So good stuff. All right. Uh, so remember, don't put the price, no bedrooms, bathrooms, square footage or price on those flyers. Very, very important. All right, next uh, thing we're going to do, let's talk about five ways to get a listing this week. And we're running short on time, so I'm going to wrap up on time. So we're going to go through this quick. Uh, buy and do the following steps below. Get those, you know, we talked about um, 
the leads like candy, the trigger listings. Uh, we talked about uh, the, you know the, doing the Red X, whether it's you know the Red X or Vulcan Seven or uh, Land Voice. Get involved in an expired program, then purchase these other leads as well. Start calling them. Call them right away. Call them if they if it's an inbound lead, call it within the first five minutes. When they answer, use the script. We're not going to have time to go over those scripts right now. I'll bring those with me uh, when we do the live event. But use the scripts. They make a difference. Keep calling them three times a day until you reach them. Literally, I know that sounds like you're bugging them, but you're not. You, and when you follow up, here's the phrase you need to use. Write this down. This is important. Every time you make a follow-up call, all you have to say is, I just want to make sure I'm not dropping the ball on my end. I just want to make sure I'm not dropping the ball on my end. Now, once you've reached that person, you're not going to keep calling them three times a day. But I'm telling you, if you call morning, noon, and, and early evening, you know, and you do that each day until you reach them, you're going to connect with people that other agents aren't going to connect with. And let me tell you, those are the clients that you're, they're going to be the lowest hanging fruit because you're not going to be competing with 10 different agents who, that weren't willing to jump through hoops to get a hold of that person. All right, we talked about mailing them, putting them on the drip campaigns, texting them, visiting them, uh, you know, all of this. Just, you've got to be aggressive with your follow-up. Never with the people, but always aggressive with the follow-up. Uh, you know, you're running those guaranteed sale radio spots if you're going to do radio, uh, signing up for referral-based, uh, referral fee-based uh, lead providers like we talked about. Then I want you to go through, I want you to call everybody in your sphere of influence. Make it very, very simple. Make sure you have something to give them. Don't just call them up and ask them for business. That's not the way you do it. You want to call them up and you want to say, say first of all, have something to thank them for if they've done something with you. And be, be genuine about this. Have something to give them. Hey, I wanted to invite you to a client event. Uh, I wanted to let you know how much you meant to me. I want to, um, you know, get, essentially you want to be developing that relationship. And once you've developed that relationship, once they know you care, once they know that you're not just looking for those referrals, at that point, then and only then, have you earned the right to ask for those referrals. This is very, very important. Then, after you talk to them, send them an email, text message them, and say, hey, it was good chatting with you today, looking forward to our next call, or looking forward to seeing you at the client event, or whatever. But make sure that you're connecting with these people on multiple different platforms. Then, add them to your client appreciation program. Your client appreciation program is huge. Uh, connect with them on social media, Facebook, uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, make sure you connect with them, and then brag about your clients. Never brag about yourself, but always brag about your clients and how great they are on your social media. All right, so we're out of time, Brent. I know that we want to wrap up on time, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but I want to give everybody a way that they can get a PowerPoint copy, or a PDF copy of this PowerPoint today. So give me a second. We're going to fast forward to a the right spot to be able to do that. And while I'm getting to that, and we didn't even get to talk about how you can grow, one of the things that I'll teach you when I come out and we do our live event, I'm going to show you how to get anywhere from 25 to 150 people uh, to your open houses each time. And it's easier than you think. Uh, so right now, if you want to get a PDF of this, go to clubwealth.com forward slash strategy session, clubwealth.com forward slash strategy session, and just type in the comments there. Just say, hey, shoot me a copy of the PDF of the webinar, and I'll make sure we get that over to you. And I'm seeing I've got some questions in here. So, Brent, if you have questions, I want to start with you first, and then I know people need to jump off, so I'm going to go ahead and answer as many questions as I can while people are still on. Oh, just read them and go for that. I don't have any questions. All right, sounds good. All right, so uh, somebody's asking, hey, why didn't you mention Mojo? Mojo is great. I like Mojo. It, Mo Mojo, for those of you that don't know, is a dialer software. Essentially, Mojo, uh, you load up a bunch of numbers into the, into the system, into the platform, and it allows you to uh, dial on multiple lines at the same time so that instead of you constantly you know hearing a ringing tone and getting voicemail after voicemail and not not actually talking to people it allows you to get on more people on the phone with more people faster that being said all of the platforms we talked about the Red X land voice and Vulcan 7 all have dialers built in in fact I believe Red X is currently using mojo as well so Mojo is a great platform. I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, let's see. I use conversion now. Jay Lane is asking, hey, I use conversion a lot, but I don't get their addresses. How do I get them if, I, if they don't give them to me on my follow-up? Okay. 
So I didn't list this on our on our webinar today, but there is a resource, and I don't have it memorized off the top of my head what the website is for it. But there's uh, essentially a, a website you can go to to it's kind of like a reverse directory online, but it's it's really more effective than that. Uh, so if you will on when you type that uh, information into uh, clubwealth.com forward slash strategy session. Uh, when you go to that website, in the comments there, mention that, Jay, and I'll make sure that I get that uh, website over to you. Uh, okay, let's see. I'll sell it in 30 days or you get Brent's Maserati. That's a good, I like that one. Brent, what do you think of that? <laughs> I, I, I think you probably need to get Brent's uh, approval on that one before you market that. Uh, For sure. Can you email us this page, the five ways to get a listing to us? Yes, I can absolutely send you that, Nancy. Uh, if you will just, uh, as I mentioned, uh, jump on that website, the clubwealth.com forward slash strategy session. Put that in the notes. I'll make sure I get that over to you. Uh, I'm seeing, uh, let's see, great info. Thanks. Yes, you bet. Thank you. My pleasure. Uh, invite them to the Solutions Halloween party. That's a, You know what? That's absolutely fantastic. I didn't know you guys were doing a Halloween party. Uh, so, yeah, we, did, we started this last year. We have it in our Living Hine office that uh, we're doing it again here October 30th and we had like four or five hundred people there last year and then we basically get vendors and do all that stuff I mean it cost us a couple grand last year as a company but um, the agents it's pretty much free for them and they can act like it's their client appreciation party so it was a huge hit haunted house and all that stuff I tried to get Arizona to do it and they blew me off last year so I didn't even mention this year um, but they can utilize the parking lot over there and, and put a big old party there together, and that's always a, a big thing. And then for Christmas, um, I did this in Arizona years ago um, and for a client appreciation party for my team, and we invited everybody else. I brought in Santa Claus, did free pictures with Santa without waiting in the line at the mall, um, and we did it over here as well. So those are, those are huge events. Okay, so let me talk about those two events real quick, Brent, because you are so doing the right thing there. And for those of you that don't have big marketing budgets especially, you are crazy if you're not taking advantage of those two events. So there's actually 14 different touch points. Every time you do a client event, there's 14 different touch points you should be taking advantage of to ensure that you're, that you're getting the maximum value out of each event. Most of those cut touch points are free. They don't cost you a dime. And this is exactly how, you remember I told you about Kennedy who went out and after six years contacted his database for the first time and got a listing and the sale out of it the first day? This is how he did it. Most of my clients right now, Brent, all our coaching clients, most of them are hosting exactly what you just talked about. We're doing the Santa, the photos with Santa in December. That's a fantastic event. One of the things you've got to do when you do a client event, make sure that you or someone else, and preferably someone else, is taking photos at that event and get a picture of you with each and every one of your clients as they come through the event. This is huge. Then you also want candid photos of people having fun at the event. After the event, you're going to contact each of your clients. You're going to get them the photo of you with them at the event. You're also going to get a photo of them without you at the event. You're going to send that to them along with photos of everybody having a good time at the event. Then online and, and all in your newsletter and all the emails you sent, all this stuff, you're going to be you're, you're going to be showing people having a great time at your client event, which is going to get you even better traction at your next client event. And let me tell you, if you want to do business by referral, this is the single best way to begin building and developing your referral database. So this is how easy it is for you know to put it put on one of those parties for like for Halloween. Um, they can utilize our office in Phoenix, whatever office it is, you know, out of the three or four offices they can use. I mean, you can decorate a haunted house. You can bring a jumpy for the kids. We're bringing a video game truck out here. Um, so our cost, I think, is probably right around the $3,000 mark, and we're hoping to have three or 400 people there, is my guess, and it'll cause, you know, a lot of attention. And then, um, but it's, it's for the agents, if they can raise um, 300 bucks a, a, a sponsor, get 10 sponsors, the party's free, right? So I encourage everybody in Arizona to start partnering up with people and put something together and utilize the space, utilize the office, and you know our vendors over there, and your own vendors, and I think it would actually be um, really good for some of the agents to partner up and, and do it. So 
Oh, you're absolutely right about that, Brent. And, and, you know, the more people at these events, the better. And, you know what, don't worry about the fact some people are probably thinking in the back of their mind right now, well, I don't want to piggyback on the company's event because there's going to be all kinds of other agents there, and I'm afraid that my client's going to talk to another agent and develop a relationship with it. Dude, don't worry about that. Seriously, that is a non-issue, really. I kid you not. It's not. It's an absolute non-issue. The more people are there, the better. It's going to make you – people aren't going to know whose client is there. They're going to see a bunch of people there, and they're going to assume that they're all your clients. So they're going to assume, oh, my gosh, Gigi's a big deal, or Jay, or Maggie, or Brent, or Sean, or Nancy. Oh, my gosh, they're a big deal. They got all these clients here. They, you know, they must be doing something right. That's what they're going to be, what's going to be going through their heads. And you're going to get tons of traction on that without having to pay for it. And if you develop a vendor program like Brent's talking about, you can get your vendors to pay for it. not just these ones that you're doing with the office, but when you want to do client events on your own, nine times out of ten, you shouldn't be paying a dime to do those events. Most of your vendors should be paying for those events for you, and they'll be happy to do it. And by the way, they need to invite their list as well, and they will do that whenever possible. So it's client events are huge, you guys. It's really it's a great way to do business, and it's a great way to 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 get people excited about doing business with you. Um, so Jay is asking, what's the best time to be calling follow-ups? All right, so this is a loaded question. Jay, I love your question. Thank you for it. Um, agents ask me all the time, what's the best time to be calling? And is, are there times that are better than others in terms of, uh, you know, better chance of connecting with people? Yes. Uh, technically, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursday nights, you have the best likelihood of reaching someone on the phone between 4 and 8 o'clock. Those are your best chances. That being said, never wait till f that time. I made my follow-up calls all day long throughout the day. I always start in the morning. If you guys want to make a ton of money in real estate, the single best thing you can do is have a perfect daily schedule. Um, we'll be talking about that when I come out for the live event, and I'll bring some examples of perfect daily schedules with me so that you guys have access to those. Um, but the perfect daily schedule means essentially you're going to have a, a magic morning. So you're going to have certain things you do every morning, uh, whether it's you know wake, waking up at a certain time, working out, getting ready, showering, eating breakfast, and then it's I'm at work and I'm doing my work. So what time are you starting work every day? Put yourself on a schedule and make sure, uh, I'll tell you, this is huge. If you get only one thing out of our call today, if this is the only piece of advice that you take and you, that you can learn from, do this. Don't pick up your phone, your email, social media, anything prior to noon. There's nothing in your business that's such an emergency that it can't wait till noon. Everybody wants to get you sidetracked. Those first four hours of your day from eight till noon, that's your best Focus time to get your prospecting done, to get your calls to your database done, and to get your follow-up calls done. If you focus on those three things in your morning time, you will be wildly successful beyond any other agents around you. Brent, what are your thoughts on that? Oh, for sure. Uh, your schedule is the most important thing you could possibly do uh, other than prospecting, right? And, you know, it's the hardest thing to commit to. Because we all try and we just get sidetracked. I mean, with Facebook and text messaging and all this other stuff, you really just have to get away from that technology somehow and, you know, go to work and, and start talking to people. You can't make sales without talking to people. You know, and we're not, we're not saying that those things aren't important. They don't have value in your business. You know, it's not that social media doesn't have value. It does. It's very valuable. The problem is that when you do it first thing in the morning, it distracts you and it takes you off your game. When you answer your phone or your email, all of a sudden you go from being a real estate agent to being a fireman. And all you're doing is putting fires out all day long. And that's exactly what you need to avoid. In fact, when you're really dialed in, your schedule is so focused that you literally know when I'm going to have, you know, what time I'm going to be eating, what time, yes, thank you, and Mike just threw out there, thank you for the time today, thank you so much, and Mike's headed to an appointment, good for you, Mike, for having an appointment that, that you're getting on, that's awesome, look forward to seeing you live uh, when we come to the, the half-day event in October, so hopefully we'll see you there, Mike, um, 
but anyway, you want to have that schedule so dialed in that you know when when am I calling my people back? When am I checking email? When am I checking voicemail? What's my half hour or hour or whatever amount of time I'm going to so, uh, going to allocate to social media? When do I do that? Uh, you know, when do I spend time with my family? And by the way, that's the first thing that you should put in your schedule. You need to make sure that you're taking care of your family and all this, and you don't get so hyper focused on work that you don't take care of them. And that's unfortunately way too common. So good stuff. All right, other questions. Uh, okay, let's see. I've got. Uh, oh, here's one right here. Diverse solutions. Yes, uh, Brent. I'm. I, uh, I'm. Not, I apologize. I don't. I'm not familiar with diverse solutions. Brent Conley, have you ever used diverse solutions? Yeah, I had multiple accounts for diverse solutions. So Dave also had multiple accounts. The problem of it is after it's sold to. Uh, I can't remember. I think Zillow bought it or something like that bought it. Yeah, they're not putting any more money into it, and so I think it's going to be an outdated product. So we used to farm or I frame it into individual websites. So I'm just going all of those different products that I've had in the past. If it's not a squeeze page, or if it's not conversion, I don't think you really need it. So I mean, I have real estate webmaster sites. I have two of them. I pay like 200 bucks a month for the Arizona one and one in California. I'll probably end up just keeping one for just a branding site because I like the, the, the site and the functionality. But as far as keeping two of them, I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm just going to strictly use conversion. So I think I really think that's the best product out there for the lead follow-up. So. Yeah. You know, and I agree with you. Here's the thing. It, it's Again, we talked about it in the very beginning. It's not about having 3,000 different things out there. It's get one thing working well, then add the next, then add the next. And conversion, you know, guys, seriously, take advantage of it. I can't, I mean, it, it, by the way, I didn't even know you guys were using conversion until Brent told me that on the, on the webinar today. I got to be honest with you guys. The fact that you're getting that at no cost and all you've got to do is push leads to it or push traffic to it so it can convert to leads. I, don't, I hope you guys understand how – raise your hand. Let me just I, – I would love to see by a show of hands how many of you feel that conversion is valuable and that you and feel like that's a great resource that's been provided to you from, from your, your brokerage. Yeah, now i got a ton of hands going up. Everybody's hands are going up. You know, and it really is. So please use it. Uh, Brent, have you guys done conversion training recently? Yeah, we do it. We do it a lot. Yeah, so that's huge. That's huge, you guys. Make, take advantage of it. Use it. And then follow up. You know, Again, when those leads come in, five minutes. That's all you get. If you take longer than five minutes, you have a 900% decrease in your chances of actually connecting with that person. Um, all right, so last couple of questions. If anybody's got one last question, I, I, you guys have hung out a long time. I appreciate that, and, I, and I'm sorry that uh, we didn't get through all the information today, but I wanted to get as much as I could in the time that we had allotted. And so again, I'll cover the rest of it when we come out and do our live event. And in the meantime, if you'd like to get a copy of our, the PowerPoint from today's presentation, go to clubwealth.com forward slash strategy session. And <laughs> Brent's like, oh my gosh, you have no idea how much work I have to do now. I love it. He sounds like you're going to be implementing a bunch of stuff, Brent. That's awesome. Good for you. All right. Well, that being said, Brent, would you like to add anything before we wrap up? Well, that wasn't me. That was probably Brent Hammonds. <laughs> it was. It was Brent Hammonds. Yes. Yeah. So, um, nope, that's all I got. I think we're doing another webinar for a different topic, and I don't remember what it was. Do you remember? Uh, we might be doing the we might be doing the listing presentation, but I think we will probably. I, I'd like to cover that live and in person for everybody. You know, guys, for those of you that don't know, I've got a, a listing presentation. It takes me 37 minutes. Uh, and it's 93% successful. So literally 93% of the time I can get the listing in 37 minutes or less. I recently taught this presentation to one of my coaching clients, Kathleen Beasley, and I'm sharing this because I know she would be comfortable with me sharing this with you. She's in Florida. Wonderful, wonderful lady. She actually quadrupled her income her first year coaching with me. Um, and even at that was really struggling on the listing. She was having a hard time converting them. Uh, she was getting plenty of listing appointments, but she was only closing about 20% of her listing appointments. And so I taught her the 37-minute guaranteed listing presentation. And let me tell you, she's at over 60% conversion right now in her listings. And I think that by the end of next month, I'd be surprised if she's not over 75% conversion from listing. Yeah, let's do that live. That's cool. Okay, so we'll do that. Um, by the way, just one quick last tip, and then we'll wrap up. 
on your listings, guys, how long are you taking on your listings? I'm going to ask for a show of hands here. What's the length of time you're spending on listings? How many of you are spending more than an hour on your listing? One hour or more on a listing appointment. Raise your hand. And I'm not going to tell Brent who's got their hands up, I promise. I'm just asking. I'm just curious. So I've got a few hands up. So I've got a handful of super honest people. So how many of you, by a show of hands, are spending less than an hour on your listing appointments? Wow, now i got some more hands going up. Well, that's good. That's huge because people don't want you there or about an hour. Yeah, okay, a lot of – got some people typing in the comments that they're about an hour. Listen, people don't want you to talk about you. They want you to talk about what's in it for them. We'll talk about that at the live event. Brent, any last comments before we wrap up? No, just for the live event, I think the one of the listing present live listing presentation will be huge. And then the other thing, you know, a lot of our agents work by referral, and I know they can double their business by referral, implement some of these strategies we talked about today. Um, but also, I think that you know, explaining some of the psychology behind of going after FISBOs and expireds and, and probate and bankruptcy attorneys and stuff like that, of just instructions of how and why and what to say. I think that would, would really resonate with them and be huge for, for them, their confidence level to go after that business because a lot of them, they have the talent, they just don't, I just don't think they have the confidence level to go after it. So, Yeah, confidence is huge. And scripting is, is very helpful. Excuse me. Very helpful with confidence. You know, one of the things that really helps, and we'll talk about this at our live event. Um, you know, ha know what you're going to say, and, and you don't need to know. I don't care if you have your whole thing scripted. At least have your first sentence out of your mouth. Know what that is before you walk through the front door. If you know what your first sentence is, oftentimes that's enough for you to now feel confident. The problem is that people they get to the front door or they get on that phone call or whatever they're doing with you know whether they're setting an appointment or on an appointment they struggle with what do I say right away and so that's the first piece the other thing that you can do to increase your confidence and again we'll talk about this at the live event but make sure that you go you go with the lowest hanging fruit first it's easy to contact people you know when you talk to someone you know they're not going to reject you you don't have that fear of rejection and so you can kind of practice on them and and you know it's a safe environment so we'll talk more about that that's great stuff all right well, Brent, I'm going to let you wrap us up and uh, and send us out. But thank you guys so much for having me. I really appreciate you taking the time to be here. I can't believe how many people are still on right now. Uh, we've got more than – actually, we've got three-quarters of the people that started uh, on the webinar are still on the webinar now. So thank you so much for that. It's an honor to be here with you, and I'm looking forward to meeting you in person. All right. Thanks, everybody.